Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Major from InfamousTechBlog.com. You're looking at the Samsung Continuum on Verizon Wireless. Uh, the Continuum is another Galaxy S device, uh, much like the, you know, the Fascinate. Uh, this one's a little bit different, though. It's um, pretty close in size, uh, very comparable to a lot of the phones uh, within Verizon's, you know, Android lineup. Uh, but the difference about the Continuum is you've got dual displays here. And what I mean by that is if you check out uh, the Continuum, you've got a 3.4 inch display up top. And then you have this, uh, the ticker display down here at the bottom. And we're going to talk about the ticker display and how it's utilized a little bit later on in this review. But um, a little bit of a different setup and a little bit of a different take on a display. Uh, than what we've seen from anything else within Verizon's lineup. Uh, let's go ahead and get through the hardware specs real fast. Uh, this being the Galaxy S phone, you do have the one gigahertz Hummingbird processor. You got 512 megabytes of ROM, uh, 336 megabytes of RAM, uh, two gigabits of user installed memory, and then you've also got an eight gig pre-installed micro SD card, uh, which, you know, ordinarily eight gigs is pretty substantial, uh, but being that this phone is still running on Android 2.1, it's not as useful as it could have been. Uh, but we'll get on that in the software side. Um, as I mentioned before, you got 3.4 inches up top, 1.8 inch ticker display. I'll dim the screen real quick and you can kind of see how it's laid out. Uh, this is really all one big display, but then you've got that separating piece, which is where the Android buttons. Uh, menu home back and search come into play uh, but they're separated by that and then you've got the one point inch display down bottom uh, this of course being on Verizon it's a CDMA only antenna it's not a world phone uh, it's Wi-Fi compatible which is pretty standard nowadays um, let's take a physical tour let's go around the device here here you got the volume rocker on the left hand side of the device let me get this to focus in here you got your micro USB charging port down here at the bottom you got a microphone if we go over here you got a soft button uh, over here on this side of the device here's your micro SD card slot which pops out with a little protective cover right there let's get that back in go up to the top over here you got your power and your screen lock button and then right here you got your three and a half millimeter headphone jack we'll come around back and typical Samsung you got the hard coated plastic uh, you got your Galaxy S branding right there and you've got kind of like a little checkbox design I'm not sure if you guys can make it out underneath the plastic surface and then here you got a five megapixel camera uh, 720p video recording capabilities too and that does have an LED flash and then here you've got your speaker phone and um, you know I've talked before about the plastic case not a fan of it um, this being a review unit that's kinda made its way around you've got some some scratching that you can kinda see you may be able to make it out here on the case and to me the plastic just lends itself to getting scuffed and scratched easier um, it's also a, a magnet man for um, fingerprints so the device you know you're constantly having to wipe it off to keep it looking good and within a matter of minutes it's fingerprinted up again so I'm just not a big fan of that I would love to see Samsung go to more you know soft touch material and just you know kind of give the phone more of a classy look just ain't feeling the plastic all that much um, this phone does do pretty good in the battery department I know that's always a major concern and a question mark for a lot of Android devices uh, but I haven't had too many problems with the continuum in battery life. I've usually been able to get through uh, for the better part of a full work day uh, without having to reconnect it and use a, you know, use a charger, you know, to replenish that battery. So it's been pretty decent. And finally, last but not least, it is a phone and the phone quality is pretty good. Um, a little bit on the tin can side. Um, you know a little hollow sounding but the volume levels are definitely adequate and you know it definitely gets a passable grade as a cell phone so with that being said let's go ahead and move on to the software and see what the continuum has going on there on the software side uh, that's probably where this phone falls uh, 
the shortest, at least on, you know, by my standards. Um, this is obviously you can see the TouchWiz interface, which is, you know, what Samsung puts on their smartphone, Android devices. And uh, actually, TouchWiz isn't limited just to Android, but this is the Android flavor of TouchWiz. And you see here, you got the, you know, the cartoony looking icons. Uh, when you go to your app layout, you can actually choose whether you want side scrolling or you can actually choose to uh, just do a, a list if you want to view all your apps like that. And I actually kind of like the side scrolling, you know, feature, the grid view. That works out pretty well. But the biggest knock, though, with the software is that this is Android 2.1 and it's not running froyo which is pretty disappointing i mean for a phone that dropped back in november uh you know here we are in march and to have this thing still running on 2.1 is a, a big disappointment and samsung has actually kind of dropped the ball you know across their whole line of galaxy phones and i mean i know some people if you're new to android you may say what's the big difference it's only one version but uh froyo actually had now, quite a bit of software improvements over uh, Eclair and so I mean this phone you got the 8 gigabyte memory card which I mean you can load you know music movies and all that stuff to it but the thing is without having Froyo you can't store your apps on your SD card and so yeah I mean that's a really nice plus because I mean some apps are pretty big especially if you get to downloading games and things of that nature and you'll basically eat up a lot of your onboard memory a lot quicker uh, without that option um, but I mean all the other standard Google apps are here here's Gmail that's pretty much standard across the board uh, you do get full exchange support here so that works good um, they've got some pre-built you know Twitter Twitter integration Facebook integration right off the bat uh, you'll see here you got the all share application which is for uh, DLNA supported devices so that works pretty good um, you know pretty much standard I mean it's a lot like the other Galaxy devices so there's really not a whole lot of changes um, you've also got the uh, the Blockbuster app here which of course you have to already have a Blockbuster account to actually you know utilize the software but here you can pull up the catalog uh, activate later and you can, you know, jump through, browse, and, you know, check out the new releases. And you see here, it's a pretty, you know, decent looking application, but that comes standard on all the Galaxy S devices. But, you know, just a big, big, big knock not having Froyo, especially, you know, five months after release. So that's, you know, a big, real big negative in my opinion. And uh, just something that Samsung really needs to work to address. Uh, but... Like all the other Galaxy devices, uh, this does do pretty well uh, in the multimedia department. So we will get to uh, the multimedia area. And then I will actually talk about the ticker display in the multimedia section because it's a hardware feature, but really where it comes into play uh, is a lot with multimedia and a lot with the widgets because you've got the news reader and all these other types of things that you can run from right down here in the ticker. So let's go ahead and take a look at multimedia.